Scott and the gang will arrive here at the notorious Darlinghurst prison to stand trial late in 1879. They'll be provided with legal counsel, but Scott will again defend himself. He's very confident and very self-assured, to the point he's almost insolent towards the judge. On one occasion, the judge will say to him that if he was a lawyer, he would have thrown him out of his courtroom. Scott, in typical fashion, will respond, Your Worship, I wish you would. And if I thought you would, I would have used harsh language, brought a bit of laughter from the courtroom. In his final address, Scott is trying to push the point about Constable Bowen's death, and he wants to call back the police, the railway workers and McGlebe to the stand. The judge says he'll only allow him one witness, and he calls McGlebe. Now, McGlebe will testify that the, during the shootout, the bush rangers were all carrying rifles. And Scott will press the point again that if Bowen was shot through the throat with a rifle, he would have died almost immediately. But he lived for five days. Therefore, he must have been shot with something else, probably a revolver, and his death was accidental. But you've got to remember that Scott was carrying a revolver at Wanted Badgery when he shot the horse. The judge will say he'll have nothing of this. He doesn't care, and if he could prove who actually shot Constable Bowen, all four would still be guilty, and nothing would ever exonerate them from this. Scott gets very frustrated, and in the end he'll say that if the law has been so broken that it must be avenged with the human life, let he be the victim and spare the youths. For God has created a greater purpose for them than the gallows. Scott will go on to write what we'll know and now know as the death cell letters. And in those letters, he describes his relationship with Nesbitt. Now you've got to remember, they're only together for less than a year, but in those letters is what captures the imagination of the modern historian and what they try to understand about this relationship. Scott will also write a letter to Nesbitt's mother, but this letter's never sent, it still sits in the state archives. And the reason being is that it wasn't named, his real name wasn't James Nesbitt, sorry, his real name was James Lyons. One of the reasons the government is so harsh with Moonlight and his gang is we have to remember that the Kelly gang is at its height and still at large, and they're trying to send a very clear message. But the people of Sydney are also not convinced that Scott and his gang were responsible for the murder of Constable Bowen, and they will raise several petitions. One such petition will be delivered to the governor by Tom Rogan's sister, personally. Fortunately for Graham Burnett and Thomas Williams, their death sentences will now be commuted to life in prison. Graham Burnett's arm was shattered during a shootout by the police, and he's sentenced to life in irons working on the roads. He'll be sent to Berrimah Jail in January of 1880, and unfortunately, that's the last we ever know of him. There's no further records of what happens to him after that. Thomas Williams, real name, Frank Johns, will five years later attack another prisoner in jail and nearly kill him, and he'll be hanged for attempted murder. Scott and Rogan will stay here at Darlinghurst and await that fateful day. Scott and Rogan are hung at Darlinghurst Prison in Sydney on the 20th of January, 1880. It's on his father's birthday. He takes with him to the gallows a lock of Nesbitt's hair. It's woven into a ring which he wears on his finger. But he has one last request, which he puts in writing to the authorities of the day. The letter reads, my dying wish is to be buried beside my beloved James Nesbitt, the man with whom I was united by every tie which could bind human friendship. We were one in hopes, in heart and soul, and this unity lasted until he died in my arms. But they don't grant him his last wish. They bury him at the Rockwood Cemetery in Sydney. But in 1995, there's a petition to grant Scott his last wish, to be laid to rest here at the Gundagai Cemetery with his beloved, James Nesbitt. See you
to me. 